There's a lot of churches in the area. I'm not going to visit all of them, frankly, because I'm not a Christian. But just because they're kind of cool, I want to see a few, and they're very old. I like the architecture a lot, so let's check out a few. And then uh, gonna focus on other things for the trip. Again, an old one, very good looking. Like, not in perfect state, but I like seeing the the uh, decay over time, let's say. It looks like it has a charm. And with like perfectly renovated things. So I kind of enjoy this uh, atmosphere. Let's look inside. Yeah, sorry for the shaking camera, but it's because the thing is broken, it seems. Too bad. Very special one. Look at these marbles. No electricity, nothing. I don't know where that sound is coming from, but whatever. Must be something in there. Look at this, wow. Yeah, there's just a ton of beautiful places here in Western Bulgaria that almost nobody goes to. See? I'm here at uh, the village of Nevestino, at Kadin Most. Kadin is a Turkish name. I'll just show you the bridge quickly. I'm gonna eat something. <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> In this rabbit. This is a medieval 100 meter long bridge built across the river Struma. The architecture is a mixture of ancient, medieval, and Renaissance elements, which are locally reproduced. There's a granite plate or an inscription in Turkish built in the southern part of the eastern parapet. This inscription says that the bridge was built on the orders of Vizier Isaac Pasha from Egira in 1470. The name of the bridge Kadin or Ava Bridge is connected to legends concerning its building, bridge the cultural monument. And it seems like they've done some renovation. I just drove by the other side and that's where they are doing uh let's say redoing the pavement and also if i'm lucky this restaurant is open because on the way to pastuch everything was closed yeah i see people sitting on the terrace so we're gonna have lunch here that looks great here in the struma river and if you look at this this is still old pavement i'll show you the other side where they're redoing it and you can imagine that a lot of hard work went into this because they over-engineered everything. There is no reason at all to make a bridge with these heavy stones, but uh, that's how it was done. You can imagine that that's kind of a tough job. Wow, over there is Rila. It's a very clear sky today, beautiful autumn. See? And this is where, at least in my opinion, uh, things go south. I don't know why they're making this black. And in the end, I think they're just putting new stones on top of it. Yeah, I see it. So that's uh, too bad. Yeah, they will put new stones on top of this. Probably make the probably make the bridge accessible for cars. I think that's what they're doing. I guess right now it isn't. If you put new stones on uh, top, you get a, that's a shame. That's a big shame. Like they put new asphalt right there. They put new bricks. You can drive across with your car and it's no longer a pedestrian bridge like it is right now. Is it really what they will do? Perhaps not because then also your car would be stuck on here so perhaps I'm just uh, I'm just uh, I'm just not sure what they will do actually either way prefer to leave it untouched because modern day architects or whatever you may call them especially in Bulgaria they can only mess things up Leave the ancient things alone because it's the only thing the country has. Touch anything and it will turn into shit. That's my opinion on what they're doing with ancient monuments in Bulgaria. I think 
a lot of people will agree with me and if not well that's too bad because it's my opinion i've seen enough of the country to know that things uh, are only being messed up hard to leave it untouched only do the needful and that's uh, already more than enough what's up it's time for lunch here in the vestino restaurant right next to the bridge on the edge of the Stumar river this is the area of Kustan view which is not too far from here the vestino is in the middle of Kustan deal and Dupnica let's say all right and standard staples of Bulgarian cuisine, which is Bosni Katofi, homemade rice, kebabchita, these uh, come straight from the grill, and lutenica with onion. So, yeah, great lunch, gonna relax. Alright, I parked here to check out this uh, church. I'm here in a very remote area. Yeah, sorry to take you to all these churches, but. They just look kind of cool, just popping up on the landscape like this. I definitely see it. I'm in a border area near Serbia and Macedonia because the villages, the houses, and churches look kind of different. And I always tend to get a good feel for when I'm closer to, uh, like, if you would drop me in an area in Bulgaria, even in a place I haven't been, like, in a uh, with a few landmarks like this. I can see maybe a few houses, a church, roads. I kind of know in what area I am. Like there's a few surprises left for me. Like I get a good sense for how things look in what area. Not necessarily by the landscape, although even that, if you would drop me here right now, I would estimate I'm in, at least in Western Bulgaria. Because the, this forest, the type of mixed trees, stretches along the whole border with uh, Serbia and it's a really different forest than in the Blagovgrad area so yeah, I would probably guess that I'm here it's a very big church this one for such a small village which also leads me to uh, say that well in general if you go more south you have the older churches and chapels that are a bit smaller it's let's say more greek style mediterranean but if you're more north or more into the countries into the country let's say deeper you get bigger churches just like in serbia it's just a lot bigger and not necessarily small chapels only that's really a southern thing not only, but yeah, just uh, yeah, too bad it's closed. Anyway, would have been nice to see this beautiful church. I just like this type of thing. Over there we have some old ruins, must have been a small chapel as well. And that's gone, so it's a very historical area here. The whole west of Bulgaria is quite historical with lots of uh, yeah, historical flashbacks to the Turkish era and such, the Ottoman era. During the resistance time, it has also played a huge and important role in the west of Bulgaria with several hideouts for Vasilevsky and other revolutionaries. So yeah, maybe there are no tourists, but the area is still quite significant. All right. Bell Tower here, quite interesting as well. diggers because the cemetery is down there probably do the service I don't know if, I, if they can pass there yeah probably it's fine the car now let's look what's here the bell tower
doesn't look too old, this monastery, but anyway, it's pretty cool. Let's go back to the car. So yeah, I'm again in Vestino because I, uh, I needed to pass the village again and now I can see what they're actually doing to the place. To the cut-in bridge, so as you saw in the video, you have the old big stones and they put this on top now. So this ruins it for me, this is a complete, I don't know, it's a complete offense to what it was, like you cannot like the Ottomans for what I did and for the bridge or whatever, it doesn't matter. Leave it in its original state, if you ask me. This is uh, blasphemy to me to do this to an ancient monument. Absolutely horrific. Either way, that's my opinion. For better or worse, this is what's happening to the bridge. So I've arrived in Kustendil, which is a city on the border, near the border with Macedonia and Serbia. Here are the hotel terrace. I have my room for 50 lava, 25 euros. And much to my surprise, my pleasant surprise, is that there is a pretty classy sort of Italian restaurant right here. Uh, the hotel is called Ramira, uh, hotel and restaurant. They have all sorts of things, uh, fish, pasta, all dishes for four or five euros, let's say. Pasta, risotto, uh, anything so what i ordered is the uh italianski nanitski suspiran sauce e katofna slata celery aioli e sinap which is italian uh, little sausages let's say with beer sauce potato salad and some other things i ordered also the katuk the mushroom katuk which is a sort of salad with peppers. After, I'll have a creme brulee, and right now to start, a nice glass of wine. And you can see, that's a very nice place. Not too busy, but at least there are some people, so that kind of makes the atmosphere. Just uh, uploading the photos to my exploring, oops, again, grinder messages, exploring book area 2021 album. Check it out on my Facebook, it's on public, you can share any picture you want. This is the Katik salad. Looks more like a Snezhanka to me, but either way, might be a regional difference, I don't know, I'm gonna enjoy this. Italian sausages in beer sauce with potatoes, gonna enjoy this. So that was a real nice meal and have a creme brulee as well for dessert. It's a good wine Bulgarian obviously, so enjoying it a lot.